Hey everyone, so now let's talk about some examples of condensation polymerization and in this video we're going to be talking about nylon. So nylon is a compound that is found in thread, ropes, fishing nets, car seat belts and so on and so forth. It's also found in your clothing, in your carpets. So it's a compound we use in so many different sectors. And nylon is formed using condensation polymerization. So as we said previously, condensation polymerization involves reacting two different chemicals and those two different chemicals have two functional groups that are responsible for the whole reaction. Now, in our case right there, we have two chemicals in front of us and those two chemicals are the ones responsible for making nylon. Now, let's see how is that done and let's get into the details of making nylon. So our first compound here is 1,6-diaminohexane and it's hexane because we have six carbons in the backbone and it's 1,6-diamino because we have two amino groups linked to the first carbon and the sixth carbon. Now the next compound we have also hexane and we have the diol chloride bonded to the first carbon and the sixth carbon so it's kind of the same thing but dif different functional groups they're both hexanes but they have two functional groups linked to both ends of the compound now we said that only the functional groups so this amino group right there and this diol chloride group are the ones responsible for the whole thing so technically, we can forget about the backbone, the backbone for now. And also for simplicity, let's call this compound A and this is compound B. And let's draw this reaction in a more simpler way to save ourselves the trouble of this whole backbone. So let's draw this together. So we have the amino group and then we have the backbone. Let's, re let's represent it by a block and let's make it a dark block now we have an amino group also here and then we have compound B so this is compound A now we have compound B and this compound B has the diol chloride here and the backbone we're gonna represent it by an em empty box to clarify that the backbones are different now here we have the carbon double bond and here we have the chloride. Now this is a much much simpler representation of the two compounds so we don't get confused. Now let's see how the reaction is formed and how is these two compounds reacting. Now we said in condensation polymerization we either get a water molecule or an HCl molecule along with the polymer. So let's see what we're gonna get. So in this reaction, what's going to happen is the hydrogen here is going to react with the Cl to form the first product, which is HCl. So in this type, we're forming an HCl molecule. Now, what about our polymer? Now, our polymer, let's draw it here, but it's supposed to be here. So here is the polymer, but I want you to see the whole thing. So I'm going to draw it here. So the polymer is going to be right here. So how will be the polymer form? Now we formed our HCl. So you're going to you're going to forget about this hydrogen right there and this chloride also. So what's going to happen? Let's start from the left. So we have the nitrogen bonded to a hydrogen, our amino group, and then we have our backbone right like this and then concentrates here so we have our nitrogen we forgot about the hydrogen because it's reacted the other hydrogen is right here and then we bond it to the carbon from compound B and then double bond the O and the other backbone then you continue normally so basically what happened is the nitrogen bonded to the carbon from compound B to form our polymer and our polymer is nylon. 
Now notice this, let's analyze our polymer right here. So our polymer has a very very famous bond and it's called the amide bond. And this is the amide bond. It has a nitrogen and a carbon and there is a double bond with, a, with an oxygen. This is how you identify your bond. This is called an amide bond. Now that's the first thing. The second thing, we said polymers have thousands and thousands of bonds and they extend and so on and so forth. So this is not nylon itself. This is just a part of the monomer. If you want to form the polymer, now we're going to react another compound A right here and another compound B right here. And the polymer is going to extend till the length you want or the number of elements you want. So that's why nylon is called a polyamide compound. Why is it polyamide? Because we have the amide bond right here and if we are going to repeat this unit, we're going to have more and more amide bonds. That's why it's called polyamide compound. Now that's it for making nylon. Let's recap. So in this video, we said we're going to talk about nylon and how we make it. And we said we need two different compounds with two different functional groups. And those compounds were here and we labeled them compound A and compound B. And we said only the functional groups take place in the reaction so we can forget about the backbone and we represented the backbone with blocks. Now here we said we formed an HCl molecule with a polymer and our polymer in this case is nylon. And we said nylon is a polyamide compound because it forms an amide bond and this is only a part of nylon so if we kept on repeating this unit we get so many amide bonds and that's why it's called polyamide. So that's it for making nylon and I hope this was easy for you guys. In the next video, we're going to be talking about a different compound, which is Dacron. So stay tuned and good luck.